passing maturity. We all want to mature and grow in the things of God, grow closer to him, but we'll see that it takes the energy of God, uh, that the kingdom of God is supernatural and it's the realm of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we need to move in the realm of the supernatural and it takes the energy of God. Amen. And uh, what do I mean by the energy of God? I mean the presence of God that's active in our lives. You know, there's a lot of mm, people hallelujah. that have the power of God in their lives, but it's not active. And so to get it uh, energized, then it's going to be active. And what the energy of God does, it it uh, makes awakens the senses mm, of mm, people mm. to the presence of God. And so mm. it's very, very important. And uh, we've been looking uh, in this series, and this is the fourth message, we've been looking at equipping the saints. And we start with the uh, passage from Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verses 11 uh, through 13, uh, that talks about the people that are going to be helping uh, equip all of us. And it's the apostles and the prophets, and evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So Christ has given equipping ministry gifts uh, to equip us. And we need that. There's a lot of people that just say, oh, it's me and God, me and God. I don't need anybody else. Well, mm -hmm. I, I mean, do you think uh, God is getting old and uh, he, he's forgotten his plan? No, he's got a plan. Yeah. And his plan, he, he uses equipping ministries to equip the saints so the saints uh, can do their work and we're going to do that until we're all mature. So this is about a maturity. Uh, and so it's the gifts that Jesus uh, gave. And what I want you to think about for a minute then, what is maturity? What is maturity in, um, in the spiritual realm? And we see this from uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. And this, uh, Paul gives us an idea of what maturity is. It's not that he had attained, he hadn't achieved it yet, but he knew where he was going and he knew what the, what the goal was. And so I'm going to ask Sherry to read Ephesians 3, 10. No, no, Philippians. Philippians, I'm sorry, Philippians 3, 10. That I may know him and the power oh. of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Okay, so what we see here. It, it's about to be mature. We have to be have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We have to have that relationship to know the power uh, of this resurrection and to um, know the fellowship of his sufferings so that we're conformed to his death. You know, he said, Jesus said this himself, if you lo uh, lose your life, you'll gain it. But if you hold on to it and, and you try to save your life, you'll lose it. And so he's talking about our lives. We've been crucified with Christ. Amen. And so it's not us that live anymore, but it's Christ that lives in us. And, and so uh, he made it clear that he hadn't attained it. He hadn't reached, but he's talking about maturity. And you see that in, uh, in Philippians 3, 12, that he's talking about maturity. So, but this is an example and a way that we can think about maturity. It's growing closer to the Lord and Amen. having Amen. a strong relationship uh, with the Lord and understanding and operating in the power of his resurrection and also then uh, being uh, within the fellowship of his suffering. And so that's related to maturity. And so as we're doing those things and it's an ongoing process, and we haven't reached it yet to like go, like Paul said, I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm still pressing Amen. on to the mark. I know what the goal is. Now we need to recognize that God puts people in our lives to mature us, to equip us and mm -hmm. mature us. Mm -hmm. The equipping is so that we can do the ministry. It's not about uh, a pastor sitting, uh, standing up there uh, doing all of the work. No, each and every one of us has a purpose. And, well, but we need people to mature us. To, oh, but so many people, they just want to operate by themselves, yeah. be in isolation and, 
and go out there. But no, we need each other, like Sherry said, and we mm -hmm. need the equipping gifts. And uh, if you are in a congregation and they're not connected with apostles and prophets, they're not equipping you because the apostles lay the foundation. You need a Hallelujah. solid Hallelujah. foundation laid in your life. And uh, the prophets, they give direction. They hear the voice of God. They confirm that you're hearing the voice of God. There's so many uh, reason that we, uh, reasons that we need apostles and prophets around us uh, to help equip us. And uh, I'm just really excited about this message because over 25 years ago, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said I was a steward of the, the energy in, mysteries of mm. the energy of God. Now, when he said that, I didn't know any mysteries, so I couldn't be a very good steward. But what it did was to drive me into uh, examining the scriptures and exploring the scriptures uh, to see what he meant by that. He said mm. I was a steward of the mysteries of the energy of God. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. It's a mystery. Uh, you, you probably haven't heard this message. Uh, a few people are preaching this message uh, because so many people are all caught up in building their own ministry. But see, when you get your senses awakened mm, to the hallelujah. presence of God, you begin to think kingdom first. Amen. Up until Amen. that time, Amen. Our minds are carnal and we're thinking church first because church is something we can see with our natural eye. But see, the kingdom is not uh, something you can see with your natural eye. Oh, and, oh hallelujah. hallelujah. It's supernatural. It's the realm mm, of the Holy uh, Spirit. Spirit. Hallelujah. Now I said oh, yeah, hallelujah. energy is so important and we need to have Jesus, to be energized and, and we need to be around people who are energized, who will energize us. us. Now I want you to know that who is it? What's the source of this energy? Well, it's, it's God himself uh, through his spirit uh, energizing us. God is the source of this energy I'm talking about because it's the presence of God that is active in our lives. And I, and I want to share you to read uh, some verses here. We'll look first at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 6. And this is from the Passion Translation. The same God distributes different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gift and ministry as he energizes and activates them. Okay, so Woo! hallelujah. You, you might be thinking, well, I'm not really operating in the gifts or I'm not really operating in a ministry. Well, have you been energized? See, hallelujah. It's the Spirit of God that energizes us so that we can operate in the gifts and that we can operate in the ministry. And everybody has a ministry, everybody has called. God determined it before. Of the foundation of this earth. And, Amen. And, and he determined what, what your purpose was. And so God foreknew, foreknew you. He predestined you. He called you. Glory Hallelujah. to God. That, that, Hallelujah. That's pretty exciting. So when the Lord began to uh, show me about energy, uh, I want you to know that uh, I had studied uh, the King James Version of the Bible for years. And uh, there's no mention of energy in it uh, because that wasn't, you know, a couple of hundred, two or three hundred years ago, energy wasn't a, mm -hmm. a real important concept. But today it is an important concept. And so the modern translations of the Bible talk about energy. There's a lot of references mm -hmm. to the energy. Mm -hmm. And so when I began my study and, and uh, delving into uh the concept of energy, because that's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. I started looking at the Greek words and I found uh, in particular, there's uh, some words uh, translated as working and effectually working mm -hmm. and, and words like that. <clears throat> but you look down at them, bore down into the Greek and it's energy. It's the word we get energy from. Energy and, and, and see, that was the word that a the, uh, 
uh, Aristotle uh, developed the concept and it just meant working, something active and, and, and moving. And so he used that word uh, that we get our English word energy from. But if you look at it in the Greek, it looks very much like our English word English, uh, energy. Uh, just maybe the last letter might be a little different than that, but it's energy. So it's been there all along. God knew about energy mm -hmm. and, and uh, Paul wrote a lot about it. There's a lot of scriptures in the Bible and particularly in the New Testament that use this Greek word uh, of, of energy. And, and what I want you to know is that we carry energy all of us carry Hallelujah. some amount of the energy of We're god made up of energy <clears throat> and and what second corinthians i'll ask sherry to read this from second corinthians second corinthians 4 7 but we have this treasure in earthen vessels we have this energy stored <laughs> up inside of us so that the extraordinary greatness of his power will be of God and not from ourselves. Okay, so you have energy in you, the energy of God, and it's active. It's the active power mm -hmm. and presence of the Holy Spirit. And we have it, so we all have it, but we all have different measures of it. And it's according to how much, uh, how mature we are, how, how much we have developed a relationship with the Lord, how we've uh, uh, come to embrace his power and uh, and the suffering of his and this fellowship of his suffering all of us have it but it's how much uh, do you actually have and then there's this verse that's really important to sherry and i and that's ephesians 3 20 mm -hmm. and i'll ask you to read this sherry and also this is from the passion translation never doubt god's mighty power to work in you he will achieve indefinitely infinitely Infinite. more than your greatest request your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination he will undo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you oh, i love hallelujah. that verse hallelujah hallelujah that god is able to do uh, more than we could Amen. even imagine or ask or think and it's according to how much of the power inside of you, you is energized. energized oh hallelujah hallelujah it, it's not about how much power he has he has infinite power and, and it's not about how much power you have it's how much power is energized uh inside of you see that's where all the great miracles are going to happen. hallelujah with, hallelujah within you the power of god and the presence of god is energized it's alive it's active oh hallelujah it's like the difference from driving a volkswagen and a uh, corvette okay you oh. know that is that is a, a, a just a natural example of the energy of god and and to to bring forth and to see signs and wonders, miracles, healings. And I've heard so many people in the last few weeks say, you know, I want to see that. I want to see uh, like back in, in, in Shambach's day and Catherine Kuhlman's day. And, and I want to see those miracles. I want to, I want to be part of all of that. Well, let me tell you something. It's going to take the energy in each one of us to bring that to happen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. I, I want to go forward. I Hallelujah. In the greatest day. Amen. To be serving the Lord. This is this is the day the Lord has. Hallelujah. Made. Hallelujah. Now I like Galatians 2 8. It it didn't I didn't find a verse that actually talked about energy that used the word energy. But if you bore down inside of it, if you dig down into it, and the Greek words are energy in there. They're in there. Mm -hmm. And let me just tell you what it says. Uh, this is my uh, interpretation of this particular verse. God energized the apostleship of Peter. Woo! Hallelujah. And he energized the apostleship of Paul. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! So, so it's coming from God. And that's the reason we need apostles and prophets 
around us so that the energy that's working within them can come and mature us, equip us mm -hmm. to do what God has put us on this earth to do. Hallelujah. So it, it all originates with God. Uh, and he, he works through the apostles. Now, don't think he's going to uh, bypass the apostles and prophets. A lot of people want to bypass them and, and have everything centered around the pastor. But God doesn't operate like that. He, he goes from the head down. He goes down the Hallelujah. way he has Hallelujah. structured it. And he has energized the apostleship of hallelujah mm, mm, hallelujah mm, mm, mm. okay so uh I, I want us to think then about colossians and right here are these verses uh colossians 1 verses 28 and 29 let me just give you an overview of them we're going to look at them from a couple of different translations but this is talking about how people are matured and and we'll see that we dig down to it it'll be because of the energy that the apostle carries the energy that the apostle carries so let's read colossians 1 verses 28 and 29 and this is from the new international version he is the one we proclaim admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature whoa, whoa, in christ whoa. Oh, oh this is hallelujah it. this is the core a verse for this message tonight so it's maturity he's going to tell us how people become mature okay to this end i strenuously contend with all the energy christ so powerfully works in me okay here is where maturity comes from. hallelujah paul said okay paul is an apostle Did yeah. you see that uh in his different letters and that apostle, Paul, had the power of God within him. But it wasn't the power of God that matured the people. It was the, the energy, energy, the Amen. active, the active Woo! power Hallelujah. and presence of God. That's what matures all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want us to read it out of another translation because there's another phrase that I really, I really love because, see, it's the energy uh, that the people carry that awakens the senses of other people. Mm, and, and, that, mm, and, and that's mm. what, when Sherry and I go places, right. they're, not, they're different after we leave. But when we come, mm. because we are carrying this energy of God, this presence of God I'm talking about, and it, it causes people to be changed, to be transformed, mm -hmm. situations to be uh, transform now this energy may manifest in a lot of different ways it may be in the words from the spirit of god it may be words of wisdom or words of knowledge or or prophecy or uh healings or miracles it, mm -hmm. it can uh, mature i mean it can uh, be manifested in a lot of different ways. Uh, but I want to pick up this one phrase out of the other translation, still Colossians chapter 1, verses 28 and 29. And this is from the Passion Translation. Christ is our message. We preach to awaken hearts. Woo, there it is, awaken. That's, that's Sherry and I. We mm. preach to awaken hearts, to awaken your senses, to mm -hmm. the presence of God. Amen. So many people say, well, the God's not doing anything. It's the, they're not awake. Oh, they haven't been yeah, yeah. awakened Hallelujah. to the uh, energy and presence of God. Amen. Amen. Okay, go ahead. And bring every person into the full understanding of the truth. Okay, so awaken them and bring them into the understanding Standing of, of the truth. Of the truth. Okay, go ahead. It has become my inspiration and passion in ministry to labor with a tireless intensity with his power flowing through me hallelujah, Woo! hallelujah. So the power is active see it's flowing yeah but up it's there flowing. in that other translation we looked at it's energized so it's not the power mm -hmm. and, and so this is the point i want to make there's a lot of ministers out there uh that are 
building big ministries and they're entertaining and they're teaching and they're doing all of these things, but they're not equipping and maturing the saints. They're building bigger and bigger ministries. Bigger and, and bigger barns. So it's not about uh, equipping the people, maturing the people so that they can go do what God has called them to do. It's about you come to me, you come to me from the cradle uh, to the grave and I'll teach you and I'll teach you everything you need to know. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, but that's not mm -hmm, equipping anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just gathering people together and, and so that we have um, finances coming in. No, that's not what, what God's plan is at all. At that's all. right. Okay, so I want to just give some personal examples now. What we've started talking about. And I want you to know that Sherry and I carry this energy of God that I'm talking about, and many of you do. Maybe all of you do to some extent. But we, this is something that's in our heart that's been there for a very long time. We have searched mm -hmm. the scriptures and we have sought these things. And so the energy of God flows uh, through us and it impacts people's lives. And, and you might wonder, well, why do you come here uh, to, to listen to us? Well, there's, there's something emanating out of us, mm, oh mm. hallelujah, that, that uh, attracts what's inside of you. And, and see, the word emanate is not a word that I would normally use, but uh, in the last two days, that word has come up. And so I had to look it up. What does emanate mean? Well, th this energy that I'm talking about, it emanates out of us. It, it comes out of us and, and it affects the people around us and affects people in these uh, Zoom meetings. It emanates out of us. What, what does that mean? It means that it's something abstract. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But we can actually feel it or sense it's there. We know it's there. It's like the warmth of a fireplace. See, you, you don't hallelujah. see it. You don't see the warmth of a fireplace. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But but it comes but out. But you there. sense it. it. It's You sense it. Yeah. You, yeah. you know it's there. It, it's there. Well, it's the same thing about what we carry what Sherry and I carry, and we have spent a lifetime mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of, of this. And we didn't know. We were, we've just been led by the Spirit of God over these years. And we've been seeking that relationship with the Lord and seeking the power of the Lord and, and uh, crucifying our flesh and crucifying the lust uh, of our flesh. And, and, and so have we gotten there? Well, let me just give you, give you a couple of testimonies from last week. We were uh, invited uh, to come to Florida last week. And so we went down there and we ministered. Now, uh, the pastors there, we, we had just met them uh, four or five months ago, just uh, shortly. We just met them at a meeting and they wanted us to come. And, and uh, they decided that, uh, that we would be the people they wanted to ask. And not only that, they're over, the man that gives them oversight uh, and told them to invite us. And so we went down there. Now the man who gives them a, us, gives them an oversight, uh, he lives a, a, a couple of hundred miles away from this yeah. four hour trip. Uh, but he uh, told this pa these pastors that uh, to invite us. And then he gathered up some other pastors and, and they came, they wanted to be with us. And uh, we could easily say, well, why, why us? Why mm, did they want yeah. us? Uh, but let me tell you a conversation I had with this man. He speaks Spanish. So he and I have never really sat down, but we've known each other for five or six years. He's probably in his fifties, maybe mid fifties. And uh, uh, I mean, he has an amazing ministry. He travels all over the world, does a lot of things. And, and I was telling him through an interpreter, uh, that I w he has an amazing ministry and that Sherry and I are so glad that we know him and that we're connected with him. And this was his response. He said, you have matured me and you have changed the way I minister. Well, I've known this guy for five years maybe, <laughs> and he's been in the ministry for maybe 30 years and he, he travels all over the world and gives oversight to a lot of people at and uh, he was the one that wanted us to come to Florida. And he was the one that gathered up these other pastors to come up and be there with. But he said, you matured me. And well, but he's been in the ministry 30 years. Yeah. But he said, 
you matured. I'm talking about Sherry and I. He said, you matured me and you changed the way I ministered. Well, that just goes right along with this message. That's what this message is about. Maturing. See, everybody couldn't say that they had something within them. It's in, It's all of God. And we're just fragile vessels, uh, earthen vessels, earthen and vessels. fragile at that. Mm -hmm. But we carry something with us that matures people, that changes their lives. And it's the active power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. within us, the mm -hmm. energy uh, within us. Now, that was uh, Saturday a week ago. Right. We also received that same weekend a letter from an apostle who's 89 years of age, and he's a, a, an apostle to Africa, and he has a lot of things going in Africa. And he wrote us a letter, and he said, uh, Fred and Sherry, the body of Christ needs you. You need to plan on ministering until you're 100 years of age. Woo! Hallelujah! That blows my mind. Why, why does the body Hallelujah. of Christ? Why does the body of Christ need us? That's right. Because we carry something that's not of us. It's of another realm. It, yes, it's a, yes. Something supernatural. That's right. But it flows out of us. It emanates out of us. It it, it has. Uh, you perceive that it's there. We have a. Per, it's perceptible. This, this energy as it flows out of us, it's perceptible, but it's abstract. And so I hope you catch a hold of this message tonight. You need people uh, like that in your lives so that they carry the very presence of God. And I, I would have, when I was, let's say, in my late 60s, I, I thought, well, maybe I might make it all the way and minister until I'm 75. Well, I'm well past 75 now. And the doors are opening for us. And the prophets are saying, oh, uh, enlarge your tent, enlarge your territory. That's, right, that's, right. that's now. That's what they're telling us now. Hallelujah. This is, this is, um, our lives are not over with. Our ministry is not over with. There's demand out there for us. There's a, there's a uh, people saying, uh, Fred and Sherry, I need to send you to this nation. And I need to send you to that nation. They, these people need you. Why do they need us? Why aren't there other people coming along? Because they're not being equipped. They're being raised up in a performance-based religion, and it does not impact the people's lives. Amen. People Amen. need the Spirit of God and the power of God and the energy of God to transform their lives. That's the reason so many of you have come back and been here and you haven't known why the Holy Spirit would want you to be with us, but but there's something inside of you that's, yeah, that's inside, right. calling that's out right. for something that God has for you, and you haven't been getting it elsewhere. And that's the reason that you Hallelujah. come here Hallelujah. and with us, and we're thrilled you're here with us. We're ministering uh, with this group uh, across the U.S. Uh, and tomorrow night we'll be ministering with... Uh, people across Latin America, and then uh, uh, the Chinese uh, on Tuesday, and Honduras on, on Saturdays, and, and so we have, there are people, and I couldn't understand it, I couldn't understand why people would want to come and hear us in a Zoom meeting uh, when, when there's multiple religious activities around them, but see, you don't Get to be thinking kingdom first. And see, this this whole series is about building the kingdom. You don't begin to think kingdom first until your senses are awakened. Amen. Okay, Amen. so I've said that this energy comes from God. And then I have a couple of other points I want to make. And, and I'm going to bring it to closure. And the next point I want to make is that the word of God. Uh, carries the energy of God in it. And so the more word of God, the living word of God, Now I'm not talking about the dead letter. I'm talking about the living word, word. of God. The more living word of God you get inside of you, the more energized you'll be. A and the more love, the love of God is energizing. So I want you to read a couple of verses. First, we'll talk about uh, the uh, energy in the word of God. 
And this is Luke 1, 37 out of the Amplified Bible. For with God, nothing is ever impossible and no word from God shall be without power so that it can be fulfilled. The Hallelujah. power of fulfillment. fulfillment. The power. Listen to that phrase. I love that phrase. The power of fulfillment. Every word spoken by God has within it the power, power of, of fulfillment. fulfillment. Hallelujah. Now read the second uh, uh, Thessalonians 2.13. It's First Thessalonians. Oh, First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 2.13. Out of the Passion. You receive our message wholeheartedly. You embraced it not as the fabrication of men, but as the word of God. Okay, here it is, the mm -hmm. word of God. What about it? And the word continues, oh, I love this, to be an energizing force in you who believe. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, God's so that word. energy is in you. So the word of God, the amount of living word that's inside of you is the amount of energy, this energy energizing force that you have, and it carries the power of fulfillment. Ooh, Whatever hallelujah, the word is, it carries hallelujah. That. So you, we have to believe. You have to continue to believe. So that's where where we got this energy from. We got it from the, the apostles and Amen. prophets Amen. and pastors and teachers and evangelists. That we got it from them, but we got it through the word and by the word, and and, and all of that uh, causes us to have energy, and that gives us. Uh, and that gives us energy to keep on, to keep on yeah, keeping keep, on. Keep on keeping we're, on. We're not thinking about quitting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were just told, yeah. keep ministering until you're 100 years of age. The body of Christ needs you. And, and other people are saying, oh, the body of Christ needs you in that nation. And the body of Christ needs you in that mm, nation. Mm, and mm, I, mm, I, I mean, it's, it's beyond what the mind can imagine. And then also, it's not just the word of God that energizes, but... It's the love of God. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. See, we carry the love of God. Hallelujah. And it energizes, okay? And this is from Galatians 5, 6, and this is from The Voice. Here's the thing. In Jesus, the anointed, whether you are circumcised or not, makes no difference. What makes the difference is faith energized by love oh, hallelujah. hallelujah how much are you loving oh hallelujah you might say oh i love everybody that looks like me and votes like me and well smells that's not, like me <laughs> that's not much love let me tell you you got to love the unlovely if you're going to be energized that's by right the love that's of right God, huh? god's unconditional love hallelujah he so loved the world oh hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. So, what I want you to see, and I'm just bringing it to conclusion now, and that is Jesus found himself in the scriptures. And he said, oh, I've come low. I find myself in the volume, book, of, the volume book. of the book, and I have come to do your will, O oh Lord. And, and that's what these scriptures have been to me. I have found myself Self. in the volume, volume of, of the, the book. Lord. It's yeah. written about me in these scriptures mm -hmm. that I've shared mm -hmm. with you tonight. And, and that's the reason that when that we're being invited to more and more places and a lot of people, a lot of uh, ministers, a lot younger than I uh, have already retired. And there's no retirement in Christ. If you're doing his will and you're energized to keep on keeping on, we're not planning to retire. We're planning to keep on Hallelujah, keeping on. Hallelujah, so I want to thank you for being here. 